Hey, good morning. My name is Eric. Uh, I'm the CEO of IPWE, and I'm here with Dan, our, our, one of our co-founders, who also happens to be our CTO. So IPWE is a relatively simple idea. It's a place that you get information and transact in patents. So good news is simple, bad news is it's boring. Patents are simply boring. So until you take a step back and you start to think about what the implications are, how many billions of dollars are spent on obtaining and maintaining them, and all the cool things that happen with them. So you've got billions of dollars invested. For most companies, it's a material part of their balance sheet. Somewhere over 70% is typically intangibles, and about 30% of that will be patents. And then when you start to dig in a little bit further, there's actually no agreed upon metrics as to how you measure the performance of these things or ROIs and whether you measure ROI by dollar return, you measure ROI by how many deals you do, or you measure ROI by how many jobs you create or how many uh, critical uh, essential uh, innovations you create, just not there. And then oddly enough, that the lack of transparency is often pissed as a virtue. So, represent a massive investment, but massively underperform as well. So one example, and one of the first things we did at IPWE was there are 200 patent offices around the world, independent government agencies done by jurisdiction that issue patents, and there was no one place to get all that information about the world's 20 million patents, so we built it on Hyperledger. Interesting thing, about 2% of the world's patents ever transact, so 2% of that 20 million and only 5% of the patents ever find their way into a product. So again, massively underperform, but big market, about $180 billion a year in just licensing and acquisition transactions. So IPWE has built an enterprise application built on IP, IBM's blockchain uh, that tries to solve this problem. So it's a multi-sided platform, and it's based on some critical um, pieces for that. So first is ownership, and we just talked about it. Before IPWE, 20 million patents, 200 offices. No one could go to one place to find out uh, who owned a particular patent. So we built a registry on blockchain that solves that problem. Second is analytics. So we've spent the last 10 years building different machine learning algorithms to help discovery of patents. And we'll soon we'll be adding uh, AI from IBM's Watson toolkit to help members find patents and even more importantly, get a common insight on the value of that asset. And then next, we have IPW smart contracts. So we'll use smart contracts to help the market be more efficient. We can enforce agreements, we can automate payments, we can uh, help manage the licensing rights on the platform. And all those pieces allows us to do a number of different transactions, and these are the ones that we've started with. So on the platform right now, you can buy, sell, and license patents. We have about $14 million in offers right now. You can do patent financing, so we can get capital into the patent portfolio's uh, hands based on their portfolio. We've done about $200 million in financing deals. The average is about $25 million everywhere from Fortune 100 companies to SMEs. Different insurance products for title insurance, validity insurance, and then we're gonna help with the annuity payments. We're gonna give control back to the patent owners and the lawyers to reduce the complexity of that and make it more transparent for what they're paying for. So we think this single platform is going to help all the different players in the ecosystem. And this is how you're gonna interact with IPWE, the platform. So later this month, we'll be launching our new user interface that will help any of the different players in the patent ecosystem come to the platform and get a very specialized view as to how they play in that particular platform. And we're gonna announce, or we're gonna launch this later this month where you'll be able to come. If you're a patent owner, you'll be able to register your patents, you'll be able to create offers, uh, and even if you're just curious, you can come look around the site. So we'll talk a little bit about the specific benefits to each one of those players. Yeah, so the, while there's a larger, larger focus, um, today we're primarily focused on the corporate and SME and university market. About 1,000 companies control 50% of, of the world's patents. Um, all, so they're all uh, accustomed to enterprise use cases like we're building. Um, but we also bring together the service providers, so these are complex assets. Um, we're not trying to put the lawyers out of business, we're trying to make them more efficient. Um, and perhaps the most important thing we're trying to do is actually bring capital to these. So um, they, they, ha they have value, um, but they tend to be like baseball cards. They just sit in people's cupboards and not a lot happens with them. Um, and we think by bringing uh, finance people in and capital in that we can help change that. 
and we work with the 200 government patent offices around the world. So uh, IPOE wasn't technologically possible until we had uh, advances in AI that we've been working on for the last 10 years, um, as well as the technology we needed in order to simplify the transactions. As a result of the merger of those two technologies and bringing them to this asset class, we're able to lower costs and enhance returns and have some pretty cool societal benefits as well. So I'll walk you through a particular type of transaction for this to see how we lower those costs. So right now the cost to transact, the first is a large human cost. So if you have a large portfolio of patents, there's a large human cost that it takes just to identify what assets are valuable in that particular piece. After there's cost for that, then there's an actual cost to transact. How do I find buyers for that particular asset? And finally, there's a contract management piece for that. So your net return on that particular transaction is 45%. So with the IP we platform and using AI, we can automate a lot of what is going on from a human cost and resource amount and bring that down to simply a 10% transaction fee against that particular asset for a much higher return on that particular event. So at the end, um, the reason we've gotten such great initial transaction is, is that we fundamentally focus in on two things. In, in the patent space, companies uh, tend to focus either in on lowering costs or, or enhancing the returns. And on the, with, as a result of what we're able to do, we can absolutely lower, lower, lower the costs, reduce those internal and external resources that Dan was talking about, and permit data-driven decisions are probably the top two things that we do there. And then on the enhanced return side, and again, depending on how you measure that, how you measure that whether it's uh, cash on cash returns, creating jobs, whatever it is you want to do, um, we permit you to improve your ROI as well. And with that, we're back on schedule, and we thank you. <laughs> Great, so <laughs> thank you. So we'll take a few questions from the audience, but I'll, I'll start out by saying, you know, as you said at the beginning, patents are a little boring, right? A little, bo and a little boring. <laughs> lawyers aren't known for being early adopters of new technologies. So what has been the response so far when you're talking to people, and why do you think this is a good industry to innovate in and use blockchain? Um, so uh, Dan and I have a bit of history in the patent space. Um, I started out as a troll. And so when we first uh, very successful troll, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and when we got when we got into the space, one of the first phone calls we ever got was for some people who knew me from that time, and they said, "Well, you know, you're 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 still a jerk because you're ruining this for all of us." And at first, I didn't understand what they meant. But what they what they were afraid of is is that we were doing the Elon Musk thing, where we were going to make everybody else irrelevant other than us. What I quickly explained to him was that wasn't the objective, that what we're trying to do is bring back to your laptop the stuff that nobody wants to pay you to do. Um, and, that, and therefore, you can, can, you can add higher value doing the stuff that you actually want to do. It took him a little while to get that, but now I think the market's starting to understand that. Um, we're not here to eliminate everybody. We're here to make them more productive. Great. Question? So... How would a company, let's say, like Motorola, engage with the platform? Yep, so we'll come to that beautiful new UI that you're going to see there. Uh, the first thing that they'll do is they'll register their por portfolio with the platform. There's a verification process that happens to, to understand that they actually own those particular patents. And once they have the, the, their portfolio in the registry, they'll have a set of tools that will help them um, understand the different value of those assets where they can start to do the different transactions that are available on the platform. Claims are notoriously difficult to value, um, whether it's invalidity, scope. How does your AI actually put a metric on something like that? Well, there's, uh, there's a lot of it go that goes in with the actual understanding the claim elements, and we've developed a lot of AI that can actually go and find art around different elements, but then we use the whole network structure of what exists in the patent um, sphere to sort of understand where that claim set fits within the ecosystem, and then we can start to look at value around that sort of entire ecosystem. So we'll, we'll, when you see the platform, there's different scores that we have for each patent. They're freely available that you can go look at for sort of quality and validity, and uh, that sort of helps us drive the overall um, understanding what the value is that for that asset. And what I would say on the validity side as well is that 
we can give you a raw mathematical score, say, you know, 80% chance that there might be a problem here. And if you want to figure out what that problem is, go down three clicks and we'll actually take you to the segment within whatever document is we think that's creating the problem. So you can still, still apply your professional judgment and you don't have to rely on us. But for most people, um, if they can get to a, a level of certainty that we deliver with AI, that's good enough to get them going. And then if you want to go hire a lawyer to dig in further, knock yourself out. I think there's one up here, and I just think this is a really good example of how blockchain is not done in isolation. It's usually, it pairs very well with things like AI and sometimes IoT, and this is a great example of how that's done. Uh, or, do you still want to ask a question? No, he asked a question. Okay, question's done. All right, so we're out of time anyway, so thank you, Eric and Dan. <laughs> the next company.